Yeah, okay, we're joined now by my old Kuna teammate, Sean Brennan, who's of course goalkeeper for Dublin these days. Sean, you've played against three of the four semi-finalists uh, this year, Galway, Kenny and Clare. Obviously, that didn't go your way in the quarter-final the last day out. You haven't, you haven't played against Limerick this year. But what game are you looking forward to this weekend? Uh, I'm actually probably looking forward to Clare, Kilkenny the most, I'd say. Um, just obviously, Clare are out for blood now, given the, the bit of a hiding they got last year in the semi-finals. I'm looking forward to see if they can kind of set the record straight on that. Obviously, Limerick Galway was a fairly close game. It was a one point going into extra time or into at a time last year, and then what, Limerick pulled it away one by three in the end, wasn't it? So mm. we should be getting two crackers, hopefully. Yeah, what are they like to play against? I mean, you're obviously as a goalkeeper. Do these teams set up massively differently against you? Like, does one team present a different sort of um, challenge for you than others? Uh, I think roughly speaking, what you see in front of you is relatively the same. You know, they're all kind of give you some kind of a split that's tempting you into certain into certain pockets. Like that doesn't really change. Uh, maybe the second half against Galway, they might have squeezed a lot stronger than maybe you normally would as well. Obviously, with a bit of a breeze there, the, it was hard to to get pockets off that day. And obviously, they had a really aggressive press on. So, but now generally the half press and half sitting off, but they're trying to tempt you into into hitting certain little pockets. Mm. And are, are, like Kenny generally seem to be one of the best teams in sort of, I don't know, panicking opposition um, goalkeepers or whatever with the puck outs. Are they particularly difficult to set up against? And is that what Eva Quilligan will be up against? Yeah, I think I think it's Kilkenny are probably better at when the ball is released. So if the ball goes to a cornerback, they're very good at sucking that cornerback into a little trap. Um, and then by the time the cornerback realizes he's in the trap, it's nearly too late for him to come back out and switch the play. Like they just they managed to swarm the three or four guys to the ball. Like so, it's just it's kind of impressive how they do it. And they do it without even knowing they're doing. It. The next thing is like, oh crap, here I'm, I'm in trouble. Yeah, Sean, I, I have like... to ask you, um, what was it like playing in goals with this other ape in front of you, wing back? <laughs> um, I, I want to be invited back on, Bernie, at some stage, maybe. So. Uh... <laughs> It's probably no. best to keep my mouth shut there, is it? I've been the, I've been the king oh. of his PR campaign for the last 10 years. Oh, He's Jesus. Not start me now, Bernie. No, 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 I can't, I can't. I, can't. Be, I have, to keep, I have to keep my powder dry. It's funny if he just jumps ship now and just, you know, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, in, he's in there now. I don't need to say oh, anymore. Stop. But look, he, he was a good man to do a bit of yap, but we rarely back it up anyway. That's all I'll give you for now. <laughs> good man, good man. He's a strong man, anyway. Thank you, all right, oh, Jesus. Uh, will you, what do you think then in terms of like um, the goalkeepers that are operating this weekend? People would generally say that Nicky Quaid and Owen Murphy are up there with the very best. Um, like, is there, Would you look at their games and what would you see when you're looking at their game? Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, you're, as a goalkeeper, you're always looking for the extra 1%. Like, so it's probably the area of the game I watch most carefully is what the other goalkeepers are doing, you know, and how maybe... Is there anything from their games that I can maybe pull into my own game? That was the thing with maybe Nicky Quaid that impressed me the most is just his position always seems to be flawless. Like it's very rarely he'll get caught out by being in the wrong position, you know. Um I look at the save he made a couple of years ago and it just hit him in the head there. I can't remember who it was against, but it's it either a semi final or a final. Um he was he was in the hill and the ball's coming in from the Hogan stand, a shot from maybe six yards out, like but the position was just so perfect, hit him in the helmet, went over the bar. Um Things like that, like oh Murphy shots off and is obviously second to no one really. I think he's probably the best shot stopper in the country, hands down. Like his reflexes are just on another planet. Like so it's really impressive. Obviously, Aver and and Nane as well. Like they're two really good shot stoppers. The two very good distributors of the ball as well. They probably don't get the credit they really deserve. I think Aina has probably added another layer to his game this year in particular for Galway, and they've become a lot more dynamic in their pockets. Can I just ask you, Sean, just about uh, modern goalkeeper now even like I, I know of some goalkeeping coaches that actually don't do any puck outs within their goalkeeping coaching it's all shot stopping and reactions and stuff like that but like at, for an inter, at inter-county level like what's the percentage between you know uh, shot stopping reflexes and actually practicing with say puck outs and things like that in training like I'd imagine it's probably close to 50-50 is it? Um I I I probably uh, probably lean more towards the puckets. If you think of it, like you're probably getting at least thirty puckets a game on average. Let's say and you might only face two shots a game, and you might only say get one high ball in a game, something like that. You know, so uh, you'd be surprised with the weight of it. Like uh, I know myself personally, I'd say I'm maybe sixty percent puckouts, and then maybe thirty percent split between the other two, or something like that, or twenty twenty, or whatever the the balance is. It it depends on the week, and it depends on kind of who you're playing more so. 
you know, if you're playing against, uh, I don't know, Kilkenny, where they can rack up four or five goals and, you know, problem, like you might do a bit more shots up and you might do a bit more maybe game-based defensive stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of dependent on the week you're facing into. I'm not trying to get you in trouble here either as well, but how no, would no, you... No. How, how would you... Um, how would you fare if you had a man behind the wire telling you where you should be putting the ball? I don't know if I'd like it now. I don't know. Hurling's probably too too reactive. Like, you know, by the time that message gets to you, there's a good chance that picture is fully changed already. Like, so, look, uh, it wouldn't be for me. <laughs> I know there's a, there's a rumor that Dave and Billy know what do, but I don't think, I don't, I don't think they did, to be honest. Like, for myself, personally, I, I don't see it working. And John, like um, in terms of like Connor Connor Whelan this weekend, and that's the main man that Limerick are going to have to try and shut down. What's he like when he's playing in front of you? Because I'm sure like there's different forwards who stand out, and their movement is unbelievable or whatever. But what's he like? Yeah, no, he's really good. Like he he kind of hugs the end line nearly a lot of the time. Like especially he's in that full forward line, so they they make it really obvious that they try to vacate a lot of space for him. Um and his movement again, he's just so quick, he's so light footed, you know, like if he gets that yard or two on you, like he's very evasive, like so he'll he get the slip. Like um I suppose like probably probably need to use him more, I think. Um, you know, I know he's come to come to the foreign in the last two games, like but there's probably more that they can give in to him to let him eat, so to speak. Yeah, my are you um? How important is communication for you? Are you a, a goalie that yaps and talks the whole time? And that's like to me, like that's a you massive. Are. It's, it's <laughs> no, obviously <laughs> you are obviously. But that's a like you can you can see the picture in front. Um, you can like by you shouting, you know, to Don left, right, whatever. Like you can see everything. How. Are you constantly talking throughout the game? Yeah, it's, it's very, very rare now. I'd be quiet at all on the pitch, to be honest. Like, but like the, the defence, if I can get a sound defensive structure in front of me, that makes my day so much easier. So it's, it's in my interest, you know, to have everything as perfect as possible in front of you. Like, you're never going to get it right all the time. But if someone's not coming in on me, the best day I can have as a goalkeeper is the day you don't even know I was on the pitch. Uh, so that's like a good day for me. So just you do the puck out, sail away quietly into the sunset, no saves, no shots on goal. Like that's that's a good day for me. So the defence in front of you obviously is, is a huge part of that. You know the way, Sean, there's like different ways of striking the ball, obviously. And I remember a commentary on somebody maybe on the Sunday game a few years ago, they were talking about the way some goalkeepers kind of cut across the ball for their puck outs, which you definitely do. And it was almost like it was being criticised. I think it was being criticised, but... In terms of how you strike the ball, is this something that you would have um, kind of adjusted over the years or did you always just do it that way and it's just coincidence that this seems to be criticised? Um, I'm not sure why it would be criticised. You know, if you think of, if you're cutting across the ball, you're taking a bit of the the pace off it. So you're hitting a 50-yard ball to your wing back or something. Like, is he going to be able to comfortably control that ball? You know, so you have to think of these type of things. You're you're hitting them a pass at the end of the day. You're not just getting it from A to B as fast as you can. And um, so you have to kind of think about the receiver as well sometimes. So it's probably depending on how, how tight the gap is you're trying to squeeze. You're either going to go full at it or you're going to take a little bit off it, depending on what you need to, to hit. Yeah, like over the years, though, like your pockets would have improved. I remember when you first came on the scene, you were putting it either 10 yards over my head or bouncing right in front of me. <laughs> In fairness, yeah, wouldn't have been hard to improve on that 2012 season there, Shane, to be honest. Like, I was only 17, give me a break, will you? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like, I know you obviously didn't work out against Clare and they put up a big score against you that day, I think, what was it, 526. So, a lot of people would have said, why wasn't there a sweeper? I'm not looking for you to comment on, on the setup or, or what Michal Dunne, who did or whatever, but can you just talk to us about the threat that this, this uh, Clare team has? And what it's like when Tony Kelly is bearing down on goals and you're like, right, what sort of a chance yeah. am I here? Well, as you probably saw on RTE Lair last week, it's a good crack when he's bearing down on goal anyway, that's for sure. Like, so, yeah, look, yeah, look it's probably, it's uh, sometimes a bit daunting when you see there's probably one of the best forwards in the country just bearing down on goal. You're thinking like, oh no, how, how bad is he going to make me look here? You know, that type of way. So, um, but look, it just shows you the fine margins of the top level sport though. You know, like Tony gambles to the back of the break, he just falls through perfectly for him three times uh, and, and he's straight through. Like, so that there is an element of luck and I suppose maybe that's a credit to his, his game management and reading of the game that he's confident or maybe the Clare guys have a, a subconscious agreement that they're just going to try and break it through for him to run onto the back of it, you know. So, um, but look, yeah, look, it's, yeah, he's a top class finisher and he showed that last weekend or two weeks ago, whatever it was now. 
what's the like what is it about Claire that makes them so effective or the she found so effective that day uh, I think what I was most surprised about is their ability to mix it up you know I was expecting a lot of I say the Dermot Ryan Has he stalled on us there for a second? I think there's a high ball after going into the edge of the square. Oh, yeah, That's stalled there for a second, Sean. Go back and tell us again there what's so good about Claire. Sorry, yeah. So I think the thing that surprised me was I don't think their five and seven scored from play. So Jim and Ryan would have probably gotten three or four points for a championship game so far. I um, might be open to correction on that, but I don't think they scored from inside their pockets. Like they were delivering a lot more ball in. So um, they varied it up a lot, like, you know, and that's just probably they have the, the guys to do the damage as well. When it does go in, you know, Mark Rogers probably scored nearly one, two in every game so far, has he? Then I don't know what scored one, 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 two against us. And he's obviously a constant threat for them. So. Obviously, Peter Duggan there as well for the, for the route one out ball. And that's where they got their third goal. I think it was a one-on-one -on -one high ball on top of Peter Duggan and Paddy Smith. And I think Tony came onto the break for that one. And that was their third one. I think so, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, like, um, so how do you see that game going this weekend, Claire, against Kilkenny, having played against both of them? Yeah, um, I, 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 from, a, from a neutral point of view, I, I, I want a bit of a humdinger. Like, I, I don't know, I think there'd be... A point in you know, like I, I kind of have a feeling might go to might be a draw after normal time. We might have to to see an extra time. There's a huge part of me that wants penalties <laughs> in one of the games just to see how it fares out. Obviously, we had the football last week and got a couple of penalties, but nah, I'd love to see it when they're hurling game. So I think, I think, I don't know. I'm gonna go for a draw and then I go kick any an extra time on that one. Be honest, you want to be in a penalty shootout, don't you? You're I would. I would penalty. love nothing more than being in a penalty shootout. To be honest, like. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't find that daunting at all, would you? Like, if the whole stadium is watching nothing but ye, and it's like five penalties each way. I presume you watched last week penalty shootout between our man. I did, I did, I did. Yeah. Well, like penalties for a goalkeeper are grand. Like, I mean, there's zero expectation on me to save that ball. All the pressure is on the shooter. Uh, I think Ireland obviously would have been twenty-one yards out, and I think maybe get it to a certain degree. It's not like soccer where you have to guess because the goal is so big that unless you're going the right way you have and a hope like so in games like the bit of extra adrenaline if you're going the right way there's a chance you're going to be very very close to saving it so i'll always wait and go the right way as opposed to to guessing up like a yeah he's giving an edge there michael isn't he he's telling, yeah. he's, he's, he's telling the takers what he's going to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but look it makes sense you know just on that as well sean um shots coming into you i presume like you, you take a you take a ball uh, up around here every day of the week, then something fucking flying off the surface uh, coming at you that you can't really react to. You see, even like Aaron Galan four or five years ago was kind of kicking balls high and he was striking balls high. All of a sudden, he starts hitting balls into the ground, and every one of them is going into the net. I presume that's the sort of ball a keeper absolutely hates. Yeah, absolutely. Anything bouncing maybe four yards in front of you with any kind of pace you can only react once you know if that shot is coming from eight yards out you're only reacting to the ball even the hurl it's very hard then to go back and react to the ball hitting the ground a second time so you've already reacted it's very hard to go and react again like so i hadn't even thought of that that's that's yeah, yeah. i hadn't even thought of that you're, you're reacting twice almost you're yeah. reacting twice like so look it's easy to react once and your brain just takes over but once the second one comes in i think you look at even you look at the goals in the gaelic grounds there i know alex constantine's one that took a wicked hop off the ground um, I think the the one of the ones in the Munster final that Limerick scored took a wicked hop off the ground. Um, like it's just it's unpredictable, you know. Like I'm, most of the intercounty surfaces are perfect surfaces in fairness. Like so, you'd be relatively happy with the bounce you're gonna get. But if there's any kind of a bobble, it hits the bobble. Like it's it looked like it should have been a save, but again, it's very very hard to go and react a second time. Like what's the um what's the best save you've ever seen? Seen if you're taking that into context, like you know the. I can't think of it. who was it saying that the the English soccer goalie back in the seventies that stopped that that header from one of the Brazilian lads. Gordon Everett. Banks. Yeah, Gordon Banks. It was like it was gone behind him. I think it might have hit the ground as well. Um, but like a you like great save, something up here, a lad flying and saving a top corner one. You're more impressed with something else, kind of a a, a dribbly kind of a yoke that's going into the corner or something, maybe. Yeah, are you like? <laughs> The the pure struck shots are the easiest shots to save, even though if they're up in the top corner. A little dribbler from eight yards out, like forget about it. Because your your brain just like goes to mush and it's like, oh my god, I don't know how to deal with this because like you've so little time to react. I think there's a study done on baseball pitchers. There's something with a straight fastball they hit very consistently, but when they start coming curve and stuff like that into it, 
they, they just can't hit them because like you only have such a minute reaction time that you're judging it when it leaves the hurl as opposed to anything in between like there's an interesting question here from a sully 180 i think reese shelley did this in the fitzgibbon cup earlier this year sean would you ever swap the hurley to your left hand when a penalty taker is setting up to try and make him go the side you want i.e your backhand side oh you wouldn't personally i have a lot of lads that do it though yeah um i'd be afraid i wouldn't be able to re-switch quick enough <laughs> so I, I wouldn't do it for that reason <laughs> What was the biggest thing for you in terms, and I know the answer myself, so I'm hopefully you remember what it was, but uh, in terms of shot stopping and making sure you're brave enough coming out to the ball and you're not worried about your body. Sorry, what's the, what was the question, sorry? What was, what's the sort of a big kind of thing that you did or advice you got in terms of like shot stopping and, you know, being, you know, not worried about taking a hit from the ball and just being able oh, to yeah. dive straight out at Starfish? Yeah, probably get a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that helps a lot. Like, yeah, yeah. Was it um former Watford goalkeeping coach Mark Cooney who was with us with Kula for a while? Was it he that uh, suggested that to you? Um, no, it actually wasn't him that suggested. It was actually David Hardy suggested the cup to me. Um, but obviously I've done a lot of work with Mark over the years. Like, yeah, look, it's especially when you're younger, it's very hard to just stand in front of that box. You know, it's, you're about to uh, enter a bit of a, a bit of world of pain there. So I think it's just something you have to kind of psychologically get around and you know practice with a load of tennis balls and practice just getting hit with tennis balls with no hurl or something like that and build up your your tolerance to it because in a match it can only hurts for like 10 or 15 seconds like but it's the next day is when you you feel it yeah so are you saying like with the cup you you were standing there and taking slaps while wearing a cup this is like this is like barton millhouse in the sports <laughs> that he's, just, he's just kicking him in the cup <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well no it just takes a little bit of psychological like if you're going to close down a one-on-one -on -one, like and you know there's a little bit of protection there like it's, it makes it a little bit easier just to go in and and take the take the pain <laughs> uh, protect the future <laughs> there's, there's a question here from detox 101 who are your top five goalies of all time now maybe it might be hard to think of five off the top of your head go like, three yeah go, go three. three all time <laughs> You have to remember my age here, so there might be a few lads hard done by here somewhere. Geno, but... Geno, you come up with your three as well. I'll come up with mine. We'll see, we'll see what the generational difference is here, but it'll be interesting to hear your three, Sean. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go uh, Stephen O'Keefe, Owen Murphy, uh, and i go Brendan Cummins. Very good. Uh, but why? Why, why, Sean? Why? I hear you're trying to the bus now. Um, I, I, I mentioned there. Come on, I, don't, you, you, I can only pick three. I, I want to, I want to think of the old lads one thing, like you know, some, <laughs> something of your bit to chain, like. <laughs> um, yeah, Steve, Stephen O'Keefe is probably someone that I would have modelled my game on, and um, so he he has to go in there for me, like uh, that kind of a sweeper keeper type of a uh, type of role is something that I aspire to kind of bring into my game. So look, he he's in there for me. But look, I, if you were to ask me who I'd pick between Quaid and Murphy. I'm just gonna go on Murphy. I don't know. I have just some bias towards him that I just I like love watching him play for whatever he's just a shot stopping or something like that. I can't even give you a really good reason as to why I'd pick him. I just pick him over over the other. Uh, then Brendan Cummins is probably the guy I watched as a kid growing up more so than anything else. You know, I suppose watching him for tip back in the day. Like obviously my my granddad has a bit of tip tip connection to him, so I would have probably been more of a tip fan than a Dublin fan nearly when I was at kind of eight, nine, ten years of age. So he would have been the guy I was watching. Yeah, who's yours, Bernie? Uh, well, Damien Fitzhenry be number one anyway. Um, I just I thought he was unbelievable. Um, shot stopping, puck outs if they when they gave him the responsibility to actually hit grass or something like that, he was able to do it brilliantly. He'd probably be one. Um, we grew we the golden generation growing up, Shannon. When you think about it, with, with Fitzhenry, Cummins, Davy, Cusack, I'd probably have Cummins too. Uh, and it's funny, Andrew Sullivan there from my own club put in a a suggestion. Uh, Brian Mullins to play with Offley, and I played with, with Burr for 15 years or so. I'd probably have him in, in number three. Uh, it's funny, he actually, you were saying about tennis balls and stuff, Sean, he'd have often be down training and just be tennis balls and bet at him left, right and centre and you're just taking hops and stuff like that. He actually plays tennis as well to help with his reactions. Um, yeah. He'd probably be, he'd probably be number three, I'd say, yeah. He pulled yeah. off the best day I've, I've ever seen in Crow Park in, oh, Jesus, off. Oh, four maybe. Uh, awfully tip all Ireland quarter final. The bouncy ball was in at the time. The bouncy O'Neill's 
and Conor Gleeson, I think, was still playing. He hit one going r- top corner. Do you remember that ball that went way faster than the normal O'Neill's? It was like, it was a joke. Remember Cummins pulled off the saves against Kilkenny? The ball kept bouncing back out to the 21. Um, th- that The ball was in that time. It was going top corner and he stopped it. I don't know how he stopped it. It's probably the best save I've ever seen. So they're, they're my three. So Henry, Cummins and uh, Brian Mullins. So I'll go with lads I watched growing up, uh, 1977. No, it's key. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie Walsh in 65. I know, um, it'd have to be Cummins anyway. He'd definitely be in the mix. Uh, I think Nicky Quaid, she's just so solid. His pocket, like for a few years there, like he was just turning the screw on Tipperary and other teams in Munster. So I'd say him. And then the third one, actually I'll give it to Sean for the crack. Ah, you're such a liquor, Shane. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. bad now. That is, that that is, is bad. That you can, you can do, you can do better than that now. Come on. Please, Please Sean, will you come on to the show again? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It was obviously an ironic pick. Sean is it's pretty <laughs> deadly, yeah. Um, who will be my third one? Yeah, Fitzhenry as well. Comments Fitzhenry and who was the other one I said? Uh, Nicky Quay. Yeah, I think he's yeah. uh, be brilliant. Um, what else do we want to touch on? Uh, Kieran Carey has confirmed that... Uh, He's he's after sleeping in, so Kieran. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> he's yeah. getting ready for the weekend. Sean, do you think Galway have a chance of upsetting Limerick this weekend? I'd say potentially, yeah. Um I look they'll take great confidence over that win against uh Tip there two weeks ago. Um and look, it was a close game last year, you know, obviously Limerick are down, maybe a couple of bodies on that as well. So there's no reason for them to go in and fear them. Um, I even think if like God, we've come back from some kind of large deficits this year, so that'll give them huge comfort as well. Like if Limerick get a really fast start and go six or seven up, you know, like God, we won't panic. Like they'll just stick in there, they keep chipping away, and look, there's a very good opportunity there for them to go and do a job. Hmm. Is, there, is there any players in particular in that Galway team? We've already mentioned Conor Whelan, of course, but like, are there any players in that Galway team that you reckon, you know, th- these lads could be a big threat this weekend? Yeah, obviously, Cahill Mannion is probably someone you have to, to earmark there straight away. Like, I think he got a ridiculous amount of possessions. I can't remember the figure, but again, in that Galway game last week, was it 34 possessions, maybe, or was it higher than that or lower than that? I can't remember, but um, like, he, he's there. He's calling the shots back there for him. Like, so I obviously, I don't know what Limerick's solution. I don't think the Munster teams tend to do any kind of man marking jobs, really, do they? They just kind of hope they get lost in the system somewhere. So, um, I don't know. Like, yeah, obviously, he'll call the shots. Like, Obviously, look, Sean Lennon came in the last day. He's had a really good influence. You know, he came on against us. He kind of marked down. He kind of put a bit of banners on him. So, like, that's another kind of dimension they brought to their game. You know, Tom who, would you, who would you think he would pick up, Sean, actually? Because he, he tied Noel McGrath down the last day as well. Like, when he got yeah. we were only talking about it off air. With, with Hannon out, Dara Donovan's distribution is probably more important than ever. And he's probably having a brilliant season. Would he maybe try to nullify him, maybe? No, I, I, to be honest, now I didn't actually watch the Callaway Tip game. So, did he play midfield or did he? Yeah, he was, he was yeah, basically he midfield on Noel. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he play wing back against us? So, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know. Like, would you put him on our Hegarty or something like that? Like, I don't know. Would, would you keep Fenton Burke on Hegarty or would you put a something like a Sean and that on him? Maybe I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Like, that's an interesting one about Fintan Burke as well. He obviously kept mm. Hegarty as quiet as anybody has ever kept him in last year's All-Ireland semi-final. He had a tough time yeah. in the Leinster final on Big Wally when he came in. He didn't start in the last day. Like, do you bring yeah. him in for a specific man-marking job or do you kind of go with what's maybe been going well so far this year? Yeah, I don't know. Like, he's, a, he's a very big player to leave out though, at the same time, you know. And obviously Henry is brave enough having not started him the last day, so... Yeah, look, it's Jesus. I'm glad I'm not the one having to make that decision anyway. So <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. Galway seem to be a team that don't give up, though. I mean, you look at some of their games this year. They came from behind at Nolan Park, came from behind against Kilkenny at Croke Park. You were 12 points up, you know, with the Dublin team, 12 points up on them. They don't give up. No, they don't. And that's like, it's, it's mad nearly the ability they have just to keep plugging away. Like, there was no sense of panic on the pitch, like, even in Croke Park that day playing against them, you know, they just. They fully just pushed up, you know, and they just got a real stranglehold of us. But even when it got down to the melting pot, then when I think they went one up at one stage and we clawed it back then to, to go level, like, but they just they just keep tipping away, like, nothing really changes. There's no panic, it's just stick to the process. I know it's a real cliche, like, but they just literally stuck to, to task and just chipped a couple of points over. Obviously, they got the goal then or whatever, gave them a bit of momentum boost, but now they just keep plugging away. And you know, this year, like, of course, with Michal Donahue taking over and you know, there was 
the, the exodus of lads down to Australia, Liam Rush, Chris Crummy, Keno Callahan, Rean McBride isn't there, so on and so forth. Like, what sort of a season were you expecting? And look, if you leave out the result the last day, obviously the it's scoreline got away from me. There were, there were some positives from the season, but what were you expecting and what has it been like with Donoghue and Franny Larkin and so on? Yeah, the, the lads are excellent now, in fairness. Like, the, the management's team was really, really good this year now. So, I look, we were going like you're never not expecting to win games you know like you're always expecting to win like even if historically it's not going your way you know you've just kind of a pig ignorance that you think you're going to go out and win like so and that was never really an issue i think a lot of our youth has blended in incredibly well this year there's a lot of year one guys like paddy doyle mark rogan um is there anyone else that's good one to Connor Donahue as well, yeah. Well, he came on last year, so he's not yeah, here. Yeah, Power's in think, there. Alex Dara Dara Power's team, in yeah. there. Console, like, so there's a lot of guys that for their first proper inter-county season with a starting jersey have done phenomenally well, like, and they're only going to get better. So like, the, there's a lot to be positive about. Mm. And what's me all like in the dressing room? Good. Is you firing Brimstone? Uh, depends on what we need, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's very good at. It. He's he's very balanced. Like he's he's very balanced guy. Like he 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 knows when to put the armor on the shoulder, and he knows when to give you a kick up the arse. Like so, yeah. Mm, Michael. Um, the, sorry, now I'm putting you on the spot here, but I'm just I I had to remind myself of the Dublin Scene hurling Championships draw draw for 2023. <laughs> sure, big sure, big sure, game coming up here. Like, surely yeah. you're looking forward to getting the chance to put Saint and the Whitehall. Supremacists back in their box. I saw he was re togged out for Kula there last night. Has anyone ever no, played for Kula? You, know, you know what that is? is there's yeah. no coincidence that he was back no, there. Just that's... trying to fit fish around and get a bit of information snake you know in the grass around. here somewhere isn't there like <laughs> haven't seen him in four years of Kula now all of a sudden he's back training huh something's going on here Shane well no the, the third team um they were just look in a bit of a bind relegation match against Scary's Harps last night and actually the manager didn't tell me it was up in Scary's which is basically in the North Pole until after I had said ah yes I'll play it then up Scary's oh well, God, look, we're keeping you as far away from Shankill as possible for the next what five <laughs> weeks or whatever it is like Sean yeah. I was I was chatting him off air, and it was like one of the two Johnny sketches. How'd you go on last night? Oh, I caught nine puck outs. I think I said up two eight. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> off. You did, yeah. Like, yeah. Does that sound like something I'd say, Sean? No, I'd say, say you barely left the centre circle, I'd say. <laughs> I, was, I was on the 14 and I didn't move out of it. And yeah, I, I can't, yeah. For a second, I was like, get me back in there. <laughs> get me back in here. Huffing and puffing, I'd say, were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot yeah. of these modern goalies are playing outfield for their clubs. Sean, are you going to start playing as an outfielder yet or what? I'm going full forward just for the White Hog game. <laughs> put, put me on, Adana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work out well for you. Yeah, Were you yeah. always the keeper, Sean? Um, or did um, you switch at some stage? Probably after fail, I would have went in goal, yeah. Uh, yeah, so under 15 would have been my first proper year in, I'd say, yeah, yeah. Any so particular wasn't. reason? Did you like playing outfield or did you just kind of... Was it yeah, I liked to, it. Goals? I no, I like playing outfield. Uh, I was probably warming the bench a bit too much for my liking, though. So, um, I there was an opportunity. I think our keeper broke his arm. Um, that season going into that under fifteen games, there was a gap there. So I said, "I ah, look, I'll, I'll go in and at least I'll be guaranteed a bit of game time." So it's worked out all right. Lonely um, place at times, though, too. I'd imagine, like you'd you'd have to be. I, I think as regards being mentally tough, the keeper has to be probably the mentally toughest player on the pitch. There's you can obviously see everything that's going on, but. You're there by yourself. Uh, you're not marking anybody. You have to keep switched on the whole time. I'd imagine it's demanding enough too. Yeah, it's, it's very mentally draining. Like the lads will be slagging me when I say I'm tired after a game. They're like, you're only just standing there or whatever. Like, but yeah, you, it's you're mentally clocked in for seventy five minutes. Like, which is it's hard. Like, it's yeah, it gets very tough. Like, but uh, look, it's part of the fun, really, isn't it? Like, mm. uh, what player do you least like bearing down on goal at you? Tony Kelly. <laughs> Recency bias. Recency <laughs> bias, yeah, yeah. Uh, and a final question then, Sean. Who's going to win the All-Ireland? Who's going to win the All-Ireland? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'd like, I'd like to... Not that I've anything else, but I'd like to see Limerick not win it anyway, just to, to break the duck there. Um, I think... I don't know. I don't know. Kilkenny might be my dark horse. Mm, okay. Well, with someone yeah. with a Tipperary background, I'm not like you have a Tipperary background. So hearing you say that, I'm not too pleased with that. I know. I know. But look, sure. Someone has to do it. Yeah. All right, Sean. Thanks very much for joining yeah. us. Uh, I'll chat right. to you later on. We'll abuse each other.
Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, guys. All the Cheers, best. Sean. Thanks Come very much. Thanks, bye, bye, bye.